Good afternoon, my name's Barbara Klein, and I'm pleased to introduce you to a session that showcases an educational opportunity for a young woman who beat tremendous obstacles, pursued a secondary education, high school, and beyond. The Akila Institute in Burundi and Rwanda is proving to be very successful in allowing young women in East Africa to pursue a college education and enter the job market, particularly the technology sector. Talking with us today is Karen Sherman. She is executive director of the Akila Institute and a senior associate at Georgetown University Institute for Women, Peace, and Security. And you can read more about her in your program. Nadine Nietegeka graduated from the Aquila Institute in December of 2013. And despite the struggles her family encountered during the 1994 genocide, Nadine was determined to pursue an education and she is now working at Aquila. We'll be asking her about her journey. But first, let's throw it to Karen. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me here today. We're so pleased to be able to introduce you to the Aquila Institute for Women. Uh, like all good presenters, I'm going to show you a brief video first, so stay tuned. If I can do this. When you look at me, what do you see? I'm not just a girl. I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I'm not just a woman. I'm the future. I'm the future. I'm your future. I'm our future. I'm the future of Rwanda. Imagine changing a whole country in Africa. Imagine changing the whole world. Simply by investing in me. By believing in me. By believing in me. By believing in me. When you invest in Akila, you invest directly to my education. When you invest in Akila, I receive the right education. The right education. An education relevant to the job market. An education that makes me stronger. Best designer. An education that makes me a leader. An education that teaches me I'm not just a job seeker, I am a job creator. I will start my own business. My own business. A business that employs others. So now I can give back. I can help my community. I can teach others to believe in themselves. The same way you believed in me. You believed in me. You believed in me. And they can teach others what they have learned. Together we give back to Africa. And together we can change the world. When you invest in Akila. Anything is possible. When you believe in me, everything is possible. What the change I can make. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Asante. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. It's interesting. I feel like I'm I feel like the voice of hope, but we've been talking a lot today about what's wrong with girls' education and what's not working, and I'd like to share. I think something that's actually working. So um, bear with me as I introduce you to the organization. Um, Aquila was started in 2010 by a woman by the name of Elizabeth Dearborn Hughes. Uh, she learned about the genocide in Rwanda while she was in college at Vanderbilt University and moved there right out of college, determined to make a difference in the world. What that difference was, she wasn't sure. Um, and she spent a lot of time on the ground, almost two years, looking at different types of program opportunities. And where she landed, ultimately, was girls' education. Oh, no. Oops. Sorry. One second. Oh, we're missing the slide. But anyway. Onward. Um, so why education? Why did she land on girls' education? What she found um, in her research was that there were few opportunities for young women in East Africa to gain the skills and education necessary for meaningful employment and financial independence. Um, she also found that in Rwanda in particular, only 1% of the population actually goes on to college, and of that 1%, only a third of them are women. 
Um, and we've heard um, a lot today about the huge drop-off in education rates globally from primary to secondary education, but what we haven't talked about at all is the even greater drop-off between secondary education and any kind of higher education for women. And what we do know is that link is what leads primarily to women's financial independence. In addition, she found that employers were not hiring local university graduates because they were, not, they were found to perform poorly in the workplace. So that there was a major skills gap going on between traditional educational institutions and the workforce. And we're not just talking about uh, hard skills like technical skills, but soft skills that employers were asking for, skills like critical thinking and initiative and leadership. And yet, we know that for uh, every year of schooling that a woman is able to participate in, it boosts, it, it boosts her wages by 10 to 20 percent and also positively correlates with a country's economic growth. And every year of schooling also translates into greater confidence for women and young girls and also for higher aspirations. And we know from all of the work and all the data, and No Ceilings has been great about putting forth that data, that when you invest in women, there is a huge multiplier effect because they invest in the health, education, and nutrition of their families. So Akila's answer to all this was to create a college for women, the first and only college for women in East Africa, one that directly connects education to the workforce. So the mission is clear, um, to build a college uh, which is a unique model of market-driven education that empowers graduates for success in careers and leadership roles. And the vision really is to create a network of campuses across East Africa and actually globally where women able, are able to rise to their fullest potential and contribute in a variety of ways, both professionally and as leaders in their economies and their societies. So we offer three different diploma programs, and it's a three-year program. Um, all the students who go into the program participate in a foundation year. They come from different secondary schools. Uh, so this foundation year is like a great equalizer in the sense that all the students get access to English skills, uh, public speaking skills, leadership courses, basic math, just to make sure that they're ready to participate in the diploma program. And then these diploma programs were selected to align with the fastest growing sectors in the East African economy. Because what we really wanted to do was make sure that once they graduated, they would be able to have jobs. So information systems, entrepreneurship, and hospitality management. Um, and you can see um, we have grown dramatically. When we first started in 2010, we had 50 students, and now we have 550 students, and the demand is growing. Last year, we had 150 slots for, for the campuses, and we received uh, 1,500 applications. So there is a huge pent-up demand for this program. So how does our program differ a little bit from the traditional universities? Really, um, in, a, in a couple of major ways. What we focus on is critical thinking, um, making sure that students are able to actually um, practice what they're learning in a hands-on, group-based atmosphere, that they're able to wrestle with real problems, that they're able to take feedback, that they're able to engage with their colleagues um, within their classroom and as well as with their teachers, the faculty, um, and that there's a dialogue process. The way traditional universities work in most um, East African countries is rote memorization, um, where you're taught to listen but not question. And what happens is when you transition to the workforce, that's exactly what you get. So it, it may work for getting good grades, but doesn't make for particularly good employees. So the other um, important feature of the program is that we emphasize social change. So every girl that goes through the program participates in a social change project because it isn't just about building the skills, hard and soft skills for students, but it's also about building character um, and building leadership skills and a sense of responsibility to themselves, to their fellow students, and then back to their respective communities. And so some of the social change projects um, have varied. Um, it may be starting a nutrition campaign pain in their various communities, dealing with sexual and domestic-based violence, raising these issues in families and communities where they've come from, um, all, all sorts of different types of projects. And it's really up to the girls to decide what makes sense for their 
particular circumstances. And just as an aside, 68% of the students that come to Aquila are from rural areas. So it isn't just an urban-based program. So these girls are going back into their communities and transmitting these messages um, and, and empowering, frankly, their whole families and communities in the process. The other piece is that uh, we think it's very important that there's a, we create a safe and nurturing environment on campus for students to both learn and thrive. And so um, almost all the students are genocide survivors. Uh, a lot of them have lost uh, at least one parent to genocide. Um, some of them are, are orphans. Um, and so we do a lot of on-campus counseling that is available for all the students to make sure that they have um, a safe, a productive, and a healthy experience on campus. So we've just celebrated our fifth anniversary um, and just wanted to talk about um, some key impacts to date. One is um, a 90% job placement rate. So for all of the students that, yeah, thank you. That's worth celebrating, right? So 90% of the girls who graduate from the Kela Institute get jobs, and not just jobs. Um, our students earn on average five times the national in, a, average income in their countries five times the national income of their countries. For the three-year program, the girls who graduate are transported directly into the middle class by virtue of, of this program. We also have 60 private sector partners. So um, all the girls who go through the program do 200 hours of internship and then um, go on to get placement in various um, companies. And so, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about data today and the data is hugely important and we're immensely proud of those statistics, but really, it's all about the people. Um, and you're going to hear about one of those stellar graduates in Nadine who we could not be prouder of. And um, she is a shining example why investing in women is so critically important. Thank you. So let's hear Nadine's story. And Nadine, if it's OK, I'd like to back up a little bit before you got to Aquila. And that is, you went to secondary school, high school, at a, time, at, at a time when your country was just torn apart by the 1994 genocide. What made you decide to pursue an education, to have the hope uh, and the motivation to go through that? Uh, I mean, it wasn't really easy for me, but I thought it was the only way that I can change my life and change my society, also help other girls who could have had the same challenges I had. I grew up in a very, very uh, hard life because I, w I was raised by a single mother with three siblings, no job, didn't have uh, a diploma, even like a high school diploma, so it was really hard. She had just like very templary jobs to raise us and so things were really hard. I remember there were times when I didn't have a meal for even a day or two. And I had to make like an hour and 30 minutes to and from school every day. So I remember once my mom was so nervous. I was like, Nadine, I really want you to go to school, but I feel so worried. I don't want anyone to find you lying on the side of the street because you had fainted. I don't think you can be able to do this. Maybe you can wait. and. God will help us, we have a better life, you can continue and go to school. But I looked in her eyes and I was like, Mom, I think I'm gonna make it. I, we have to try and uh, keep doing this. And luckily enough, I didn't really faint on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to graduate from high school. So, but I think I had this like, strong desire, desire inside me and um, Looking at my mother failing to give us the basic needs, of course not her mistake. It was because of different reasons, uh, history and uh, all that. But I didn't want to be the same mother who would fail to provide for my family. I think that why maybe. And you believed that education was the way to do that, even though you were a girl? Yes, I believe that the education was the only thing to do that because I could see other people in my community who are really respected enough and uh, important people. And there was other reasons like um, linked to that. Being, being uh, 
exposed to the genocide. As you know, my country has, is one of the countries which has really uh, experienced one of the big atrocities, genocide, which happened in 1994, which killed almost one million people. So, uh, there was like all these problems, extreme, extreme poverty, lack of, of uh, uh, opportunities and conflicts, all that. So I really thought education was the only way to do that. So how did you hear about Akila? Uh, I'm not sure if I have uh, enough time oh. <laughs> to talk about this story, but I will try to be as brief as I can. Um, after graduating from high school, I had uh, uh, a small job in a grocery store, and one of my, uh, my boss had about, was a, he was a student at the University of Rwanda, and he had a presentation about Akila, but he immediately thought about me. He came to me and was like, Nadine, I heard about a college that is coming to Rwanda. I think you can really be able to go to this college. And at that time, I couldn't speak any English, <laughs> believe me or not. I was like, how am I going to do this? Because I don't speak any English, and this college is teaching in English. I have to do an interview. And she's like, I've been really observing you. I think you have potential in you. Just give it a try. I went there, and um, I applied as Akila. I did an interview. Luckily, I was admitted in 2011 in hospitality management. <laughs> so, Karen, let, uh, let's talk a little bit more about how you find young women like Nadine. In this case, she was lucky a boss knew about it. But what do you do to reach out and recruit? Um, we actually uh, have a group of people on campus, some of our um, students, some of our graduates, um, recruiters on staff who go out into the secondary schools and really spread the word about Aquila and the opportunity there um, to make sure that girls feel confident enough that they can apply to the program. I think uh, there's a lot of young girls like Nadine who feel like, oh, I can't make it, I can't get accepted. And so we really try to make it as easy as possible for young girls to be able to apply to the program. You know, a lot of the school uh, students who come there, their parents didn't get educated. A lot of them are subsistence farmers. And so just to be able to talk about the importance of education too, not just with the students, but with the parents and why it's, it's valuable for them to do that. And a lot of our students actually, as they graduate, end up supporting their families. Yeah. Now, Nadine, with you, you, you said you majored in hospitality management, but you ended up working at Aquila. You are a recruiter, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, I, even though I majored in hospitality management, I actually had another opportunity to go work with the Marriott International mm. because GW Marriott is one of our big employ employer. <laughs> uh, but the founder approached me, asked me if I can work for Aquila and help them build up the recruitment strategy and bring other girls to Aquila. I was like, yeah, I think this is the biggest opportunity I have to really help other girls within my community to get to, to come to college and uh, share with them my story and tell them that they can do it, they can achieve all that I've achieved. So now I'm doing a tour in the whole country, talking to high schools, telling other girls to come to Akira. Yeah. What kind of uh, obstacles do you find that they need to overcome to be willing to give it a try? Um, I think they have, um, let me, like, my story, I, I start, after graduating from high school, I realized that 96% of other girls we went together, they got married after high school. So the obstacles they see, they immediately think, okay, I have no any other opportunity, maybe my other things to get married or to, just go and sit at home. I think what they need is like believing in themselves because, I mean, no one has ever told me that you can be able to do what you wish you, you wish to do or what you want to become before going to Aquila. So I didn't really have that sense of like that mindset, even though I had the strong desire to do that. So I think these girls need someone to keep like telling them that they can do this or with the how, I mean, 
I didn't have any financial support to go to school. They think there is a lot of barriers of like financial in, um, problems and, every, and all these things. So all they need is like to push her down to do whatever they can do to get this uh, crucial thing, which is education. So that's what I think. So what about the financial uh, burden of this? Karen, I mean, how, how do young women? Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's an excellent question. I mean, and, and we were finding that a lot of girls were, it was daunting to have to come up with some money for school. And on the other hand, we felt very strongly that if the school was free to them completely, that there wouldn't be that same level of commitment and investment. And so the, the compromises, we set up a tuition deferment program. So scholarship covers the majority of the costs, but there's a, a, a specific amount that the students are responsible for coming up with every year. So we have a tuition deferment program that allows students to cover the majority of the costs that they're responsible for and pay that back once they get a job. Why, Nadine, did you choose hospitality management? Uh, because I really like to interact with people and meet different kind of people and help people. So that's why I chose hospitality management. And because I think work, working in hospitality industry can allow me to maybe go all over the world and travel in different countries. So yeah, that's why. <laughs> um, now, Karen, can you talk a little bit more about this retail partnership that Akila has, how much that's responsible for helping things continue, how important it is? You mean with Kate Spade? Uh, Kate Spade, yeah. yeah. Um, so we think it's uh, really important. We, we talk a lot about um, non-governmental organizations not being financially sustainable, and we also are, you know, rely on the generosity of individuals and major donors, but we're also committed to our own financial independence. And so we have a, a partnership with Kate Spade on the ground in Rwanda, which has just set up a production facility there. And so some of our students are doing some training for, um, for Kate Spade. Um, they're providing some monitoring and evaluation data collection services. And we, in turn, are training up their corporate management team on business management, IT, um, and b business English because we have developed the curricula and we can leverage our infrastructure to be able to provide that service, service to other um, com companies and organizations in need in Rwanda. Can I ask one final question? Do you have any sisters? I do have a sister and two brothers. And what about your sister? Any interest in going to Aquila? Yeah, she's coming next oh, year. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. Definitely. Great. Thank you. Thank and you. maybe I would like to add only one thing quickly. Sorry. Uh, we have a crash at Aquila or a daycare, which allows these women to bring even their kids and their little babies to school. They can leave them in the daycare. We have a full time nanny who takes care of them, and then they can go back to school now. So, we need that here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah.